thing. You might need a theme song for your shit. Check this out. Ah, turn it right now. Let this shit seep in. JackThriller.com. We creep in. Snoop Dogg to the left. Jack Thriller to the right. JackThriller.com. Do it all night. Hit the website. Hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get hooked up with a bad super bitch. Bring it down, Wiz. Bring it down. Hey, this is a very special episode of New Jack Thriller City, man. I'm over here with three of the best guys I know, kings of comedy in their own right, man. You didn't see them on Comic View. You didn't see them on uh, Def Comedy Jam, uh, Martin Lawrence, uh, 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 First Amendment, and um, my favorite show, and I'm featured on there myself, the Yeah, We Talk Like This podcast. Man, Steve Brown, Marvin Hunter, and Lav Love. Come on, man. The cast of Yeah, We Talk Like This podcast. Let's go! <laughs> what up? What up? What up? <laughs> and special shout out to my DJ, you know, one of the best DJs in the land, DJ Wizard Craig, a.k.a. DJ I Am. Somebody. I am somebody. Let's get it. Let's get it. Chris, you good over there? All right, cool. Let's get it. Let's get it. Man, yo, man. So I'm going to start off with you, Lav. Hey, Lav, let's talk about how you get started in comedy, man. Where does it even come from? Uh, Well, you know, I I was in the military, so I started doing comedy when I was in the military. In the military? Yeah, I was was in the Army, and um, I used to—I'm one of these dudes. I I started— what they, what they say, I got it out the mud. So I used to, every Thursday, I used to, when I decided I wanted to do comedy, just like every comedy, you know, you've been told you're funny your whole life. So I used to drive three hours every Thursday night to do amateur night in Houston, Texas, then drive three hours back to Colleen, Texas, and be up at 5 o'clock in the morning to uh, to go to work. So that's that's how I started. So there's, there's it's not a, a, a comedy circuit in the military. That's not what you're saying. No, ain't, ain't no comedy circuit. It's a work circuit. And, you, and your ass get there however you're going to get there, and you try to do that whenever you got free time to do it. And, like, what, what made you know that you wanted to do that even while you was enlisted? Uh, I th- for me, the, if I keep it all the way 100, I was watching Def Jam one night, and it was a dude on there, and I was like, I'm funnier than him. <laughs> uh, but then this little voice went off in my head said, yeah, you might think you're funny to him, but he on TV and your ass sitting on the couch. And so I was like, true, true. Then the little voice was like, yo, so what you going to do? You going to keep sitting on the couch or you going to try to take this nigga's spot? So I was like, hey, nigga, get off the couch. And that's how I started. The next, that was like on a, that was on a Friday. Def Jam came on on Friday nights. That next week, on the, uh, that next week, I was calling around trying to figure out how I was supposed to do it, what I was supposed to do. I was, at the time, I was dating Princess Ivory. She was on, on the radio, Princess Ivory. And uh, some more had just came in town to do an uh, interview. So she shot me some more's number. And some more, I called some more. This at the time, some more like a queen of comedy. She that chick, but she picked up the phone and she gave me the the instruction, the handbook on how to do it, what I was supposed to do to open mics, and she told me everything. She know me from a can of paint, and she was there. So forever, mo, uh, some more will forever be golden in my book, no matter what. Yeah. Hold on, wait, wait. Perfect stranger. Perfect strength. You are. Yes, she never calling, knew me. She called. Was, <clears throat> and I just like, yo, I got your number from my girl, Princess Ivory. She's like, yeah, at the radio station. So then. Oh, okay. So you had a reference. Yeah, yeah. A uh, great uh, reference. To the, okay, because Marvin witnessed the motherfucker call me. Cause my my <laughs> my shit my number was placed on some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, after we yeah. were leaving the podcast yeah. one night. Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Somebody yeah. random called you. Randomly Random called me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I had asked y'all too. Hey, y'all ever heard of this nigga named such and such and such? For well, for I left, and I called I the that. motherfucker back by accident. <laughs> Damn. Out of curiosity, you, you did I'm like, handle it professionally, though. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> what? Yes. He did. He did. Damn. Yes, I did. Okay. Did. Okay. Babe. Okay. So, hey, man. I, <laughs> like some more talk to me, so I I can't be mad at somebody randomly calling you. That's so what, hey, I can't that, be mad at. Him. That's why I love this story. Yeah, I can't. Mm. I can't be mad at him. I mean, my thing is, you gotta get your no. Mm. That, that's that's my rule. Get the no. Make somebody tell you no. Don't mm. assume they're gonna tell you no. Always mm. get your no. But you mm. came through a good nigga. Hey, hey, Princess Ivory. Yeah, but, hey. Shout out to Princess Ivory, man. Yeah, but at the time she wasn't a good nigga. But I hear you. <laughs> 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 
I ain't gonna even tell you how that ended. Yeah. I, I, I can only imagine. No, you can't imagine. Yeah. It's one of them dating horror stories. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Hold on. How, how long was y'all dating? We was dating long enough to where I got out the military, came back home. Fuck it, I tell it. I came back. <laughs> and, uh, I came back. I'm like, yo, so I'm gonna be back in two weeks. What's up? She like, oh, uh, I'm like, what you on about? She's like, yeah, I, I don't know where, where we gonna be. You know, I'm having conflict. I'm like, how you having conflict? Nigga, come to find out, she had moved a nigga in. Oh, Damn, that's conflict. That's, that's definitely conflict. conflict. Yes, nigga. that's a conflict of interest. Moved a nigga in. That's a conflict of interest. Yeah. Yes. I think it was pre packed Yeah, that yeah. Is, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Already there. All right. God damn, you you wasn't you wasn't trying to give her none of that goddamn uh them benefits. I was getting ready to get out of the military. Well, no benefits to be had. No, she wasn't gonna benefit. No, she wasn't gonna benefit at all. But hey, it's all good. You know, everybody got they they little mission to live and everything right there. That nigga gone. They ain't work out. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect revenge. Oh, hey, perfect. Hey, so God put you people in your life for a, a reason. And, 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 and the thing season. about it, yeah, and I would have yeah. never made the connection with Samoa if it wasn't for her. Yeah, so right. I ain't never gonna yeah. be mad at her because yeah. she, she connected me to Samoa. So mm. I'm not mad. That's why I'm not bitter about the situation because right. I, I still I got some out the relationship. You know what I'm saying? And that's every, you got to grow from every relationship. I grew. I, a career sprung from the relationship. Yeah, hey, do you still hear about her on the circuit now? Yeah, we, we talk, we not on a regular basis, but we friends. We interact on social media every now and then. You know, I know. Oh, 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 she know you an asshole. Got you. Oh, yeah. You know All me. Right, I'm yeah, an yeah. uncut, uncut yes, you is. asshole. So I don't. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't. I, so, but I ain't mad at her. I'm not the whole the, the grudge type nigga like that. I'm more to say it, put it out there, and be done with it. Mm. And I'm that type of dude. Yeah, I, yeah. Wow. Move the nigga in. Like, and like, can I have you let me let me tell you. Let me tell you. I think the nigga when had you last seen nigga. her? Huh? When had you last seen her before you made this phone call? It, it had been like four months because I was I was living in Arizona at the oh, time. Come on, oh, yeah. laugh, you tripping? I was in the, I was in the military. You super tripping? I'm bro. in the military, nigga. Ain't like you just can leave and go yeah, when you yeah, feel yeah, like. My nigga, you in there? So she just supposed to hold up her life for your ass? Yeah, yeah, nigga. If, if, if we that's together, if we both love her, he nigga hold me in her hostage. <laughs> Nigga, when you're in the military, that's that's the life of dating somebody the who in the military. <laughs> Nigga, you can be in the military and get stationed overseas for two years. So yeah. that's just that's just the reality of life. Don't mm -hmm. if you date somebody in the military, you got to be prepared to deal with being away from them for extended periods of time. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad I went AWOL. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Hey, let's lay, let's, let's slide right over to Steve, man. <laughs> Yo, so hold on, Steve. I didn't even know that you you was in the military. I went in the military. I'm just talking shit. You just went AWOL. <laughs> I, I just went AWOL. You know, AWOL in life. He was life, in the Salvation man. Army. <laughs> 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 I start. I went in as an E five and left that bitch as an E. Think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I ain't even get enlisted, nigga. That's, that's the E I went. So oh yeah. shit. Yeah. Got you, man. So how does comedy even start for you, bro? Man, listen. I was uh, uh, at, uh, at my my college, Stillman College in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and I was hosting, you know, step shows and talent shows and all that. And Ricky, but how you know you could even do that? You gotta, you you going too fast for me, dude. I was always, you know, I always thought I was outgoing. funny, outgoing, and just just always in the shit. And uh, you know, I just started just you know trying my hand at at just doing just. Crazy shit. I was always the life of the party. Uh, so, you know, when I went to college, uh, that was my thing. You know, hosting shows, step shows, uh, 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 um, talent shows. So this particular talent show, Ricky Smiley, was the headliner. And he saw me hosting, and he's like, man, you know what? You ought to start, start doing comedy. You ought to try it. I'm like, okay, cool. And he gave me his number. I, I, I called him. He picked right up. And, and there it began. He took, took me on the road, but I had to pay my dues because I was at, at that time I was working for this place called Toyota Rental Car. And my, and my boss believed in my crazy dream. He would let me get the cars for free, but I would be escorting their asses all over the country. I had to drive, and we would be in the Oklahoma, Cal I mean, I'm, I'm the driver. So, and getting working for absolutely free. So, you know, you, absolutely. You, ab ab absolutely free. So, you, you know. You were paying for the gas, though, right? I'm sorry? 
You wasn't paying. They for were the helping gas. me pay for the gas, of course. But you he know, said they, helping. they were helping. helping. Yes, they helping they you. pimped the shit out of me. They pimped <laughs> the shit out of me. But you know, the thing is, man, I <laughs> I learned a valuable lesson, nigga. Dry your own car. <laughs> so 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 yeah, I, I did that, man. And um, you know, I, I got my name out there. <laughs> this nigga, <laughs> this nigga can't believe I got pimped like that, but I did. And uh, but it worked out, man. And you know, I got my name out there, and, and bam, here I am. So. Word, word, word. So, like, like, what's the night that you first went on stage and you was like, you know what? This is how I'm going to survive. This is my calling. This is my purpose. What's that, what's that, what's that light that click on? Man, you know what, when you do, because, you know, coming up as an up-and-coming comic, you're always inconsistent. But when you get that, that first real killer show, you're like, okay, bitch, this is it. This is it. This is the one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that happened, and, and that light immediately clicked on. Like, you know what? I can do this. So, you know, from then on, there it is. Mm, mm. You remember what that show was? Uh, Man, dude, I've been doing this so long, I don't even remember. I, I really don't. But I, I, all I know is I, I remember when the, the, the light clicked on. I was like, because I, I think I damn near had a standing note, and I ain't even had that many jokes. I did a lot of physical comedy at the time, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So you know, when the people, like, damn, just lost, I'm like, damn, I'm the man, you know? And I wasn't really doing mm. about, like, five to seven minutes because, you know, Ricky and them had all the time and all that. So I was like, shit, I can do this. So from then on, I was like, man, let me, I, I, I was hungry ever since. since Hold on now. Now you've uh, got five to seven minutes. Five to seven. You being a physical comedian, what's the most physicalest thing that you were <laughs> doing <laughs> in this five? Is that a word? Physicalist. Physicalist. This is. Physically. You know what, man? I, I, I did What's so the thinking, shit that you dude, knew? Bought too many vows. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> many vows, then. Go ahead. Nigga, it was, I, did, I, I did something, and, I, and, and while standing there, I hit a back tuck. A back tuck. Yeah, a back flip on stage. Yeah, you should have said a back flip. Yeah, that ain't really sound right. <laughs> no, nigga, I tucked. I really did. Hey, hey, yeah, we live in Atlanta. Stop saying yeah, you tucked. Tuck, tuck. <laughs> Stop saying you tucked. Yeah, Atlanta. Back, back tuck. <laughs> Shut up, nigga. I had a back flip. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate you, you getting you me. You back tucked. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's called a okay. back. Okay. Back tuck. Uh, yeah, yeah. You ain't got to yeah. yeah. describe it because these niggas ain't going to tell you. Yeah, held his leg. You did that? Okay. I had these niggas, nigga. I held myself in the book. I had my legs. Still back. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I did, man. <laughs> and it worked out, man. Was duct tape involved in this? No, thing? nigga. Oh. Just, like, <laughs> just a back tuck, man. <laughs> and the niggas caught me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> but yeah, man, that's what it was, dog. I, uh, and from that moment on, I was like, yeah, I got this. Damn, you was a hell of a fucking opener. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> Them niggas didn't give a damn about me, man. They just let me do my thing because I was the driver. Right. Mm. So he's like, man, let me. They weren't intimidated in, in, in by that. Words, that in other words, you it brought, yeah, all. In other words, <laughs> <laughs> they weren't intimidated at all. Like this nigga, the driver, just gonna give him a little time, he man. Gonna, he, you gonna, know. he gonna he go to tuck. Then <laughs> nigga <laughs> on the side of the stage. Turn he that. The tuck. <laughs> hey, nigga, turn your flip and get the hell on. Get yeah. the in the car. <laughs> hey, you know how veteran comics be? Yeah. Like, he like nigga, I'm a comedian. Like nigga, you a tumbler. Yeah. <laughs> No, Tumblr slash driver, nigga. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> Dominique Dawes. <laughs> oh, you about to bring it on. <laughs> no, you bring it. No, you bring it. <laughs> bring it on. Yeah, you got served. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, Marvin, we, we, we right up to you, man. Like, how does it start, man? Where, where, where are you? Um, I ain't never had no aspiration to be no comic. I was funny, always funny, but uh, the way I got got into it, uh, I was married and, and funk ass heifer took everything when I got divorced, right? So, so, <laughs> yeah. so when you ain't got nothing, you get bored. So they moved me back in the barracks. I was in the military too. They moved me back in the barracks, and I was with in the room with a guy named Clay Miles, comedian Clay Miles. He's still a comedian right now, and then he was uh, taking me around to open mics, and I was watching them bomb. Back and forth, just everybody was horrible. And I was like, I can do that. I have them <laughs> laughing in the barracks. I can do that. And then I went up there, man. You know, uh, the first time I went there, I put my name on the list, and uh, he called my name. I hid in the back because I was scared. Then I came back that next week, put my name on the list. He called my name. I hid in the back because I was scared. 
And then the third time I went up there, he said, man, you wasting my fucking time. Yeah, you going to do it? I said, all right, I'm going to do it. And then I got up there, got that first laugh, like I hit a dope, man. I've been chasing it ever since. Uh, Damn. Bro. That's yeah. crazy, man. I wish I had a head in the back when them niggas asked me to drive. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I definitely understand what you said with the driving back and forth, you know what I'm saying? Because when I got to South Carolina, I used to have to drive from Charleston to Columbia. An hour and a half, two hours, one way, do, do the open mic, then drive back and get ready for PT. So, when, you know, so, niggas say pay dues, we we, we, we did our thing. Well, 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 hold on. So, Marv, you understood his drive, but you ain't understand mine. Oh, no, yours a little different because you back tucking and tuck back. And, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was lot, All over lot, the country. Yeah, that's, a lot, that's a lot of stuff going on there. And, <laughs> yeah. and they, they made you, like, they, they put in on gas for you. They, yes. they put in on gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you like, you still, it wasn't enough that you was driving. Hey, man, you know what, man? Stop bringing it up. I'm going to get mad at them niggas, man. Them <laughs> niggas got me. <laughs> they got me in the name of comedy. They got me. A word, word, word. So, so at, at that, that particular time, What's some comedians that y'all looked up to and that y'all thought was dope? You know what? My first comedian that I really thought was dope, believe it or not, I, I saw DL, I saw Bernie, but I think I was at, in Birmingham, Alabama, and Sherman Golden was the opener, mm. and Sherman, like, killed it. And I was like, man, I want to be a comedian. I mean, I, though, and they were big names back then. Sherman was the, I guess he, he was the first one out, but he really killed it. And I'm like, dog, I was really impressed with Sherman. And I was like, man, I, I, I you know, so I, I give a lot of credit to him, you know. Sherman is amazing. Sherman's amazing, dog. Yeah. But before I started doing comedy, the first comedian I ever saw, and I was like, <laughs> wow, was, uh, I saw Eddie Murphy's Raw. And I just was, I was, mm. I mean, well, delirious, I'm sorry. And I was blown away. I was like, wow, this is what it could be? And then, but then when I started doing comedy, the comic that set the tone, it showed me like, this is where you need to be. It's Earthquake. Mm. Earthquake. I, I, Earthquake, <laughs> pound for pound, is, is one of the best stand-up comedians I've ever seen in my life. And I, just what I've seen him do to a crowd mm -hmm. and wreck shop at a club, I I I never seen nobody do it before. And so when I, when I first started doing comedy back in Atlanta, he still owned the comedy clubs. Mm -hmm. It was Earthquake's Uptown Comedy Corner. Mm -hmm. And Quake used to still come through and host. I've literally seen comedian headliners destroy a club. I'm like, ooh, ain't nothing left in that room. Then Quake come up mm -hmm. and shake that mug apart. Yeah. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. It's another level to it. And that's yeah. so that's like Marv said, that hit a dope. <laughs> Seeing Quake, that's the level I'm searching mm -hmm. for my whole career. I'm trying to get to where Quake, Quake was at, what I've yeah. seen Quake do the rooms. Mm -hmm. to, that's, this day. to this day, yeah. I've st I still ain't never seen nobody do what I've seen Quake do. And I've seen comedians monster rooms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I've seen Quake do, I ain't, I ain't seen nothing like it. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Marvin. Now, for me, I started doing comedy in Hawaii. So it's a little different. Wasn't no Quakes and, and Sherman and them mm -hmm. over there. So I was admiring local people that was there. But one of the guys that was there was in the military with me. It's comedian Big Mo Dixon. Big and, he, and he stays in Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, he's and all, stripping now. Yeah, all of us was... <laughs> <laughs> what? Big Mo Dicks. He, he stripping. <laughs> hey, hey, he ain't stripping. But during then, he oh, had a, he had a clothes away. He pulled his clothes down and had a green G string on. I was like, you know what? This man, if he he got that much <laughs> confidence to expose his he booty stole cheeks. that from me. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. A lot of folk were doing it, but at the time, we all opened Michaels, and he was so much better than uh, all of us. Yeah. And I used to look up to him, man. He used to he used to kill it back in the day. Big Mo Dicks. Yeah, I remember uh, Big Mo. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember Big Mo. Mm -hmm. He funny. Hey, did you ever like, do you know, have your own uh, thong joke and shit? Where you nah, nah, tribute to Big Mo Dixon? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, nah, tribute. nah, nah. <laughs> can't nah. have no tribute joke. We got naked to another <laughs> man. You can't, you can't do. You can't be a tribute comedian. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah, not get not naked. Jack Shepard, nigga. Y'all don't remember why I used to get butt naked yeah, on stage. Yeah, but that's why you asked it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, no. yeah. Nah, yeah. we get naked for nothing. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, the you, difference. You yeah. talking about a, a tribute joke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get naked. Popping your ass, she's just for Big Mo. Come yeah. on. Wherever you are. Hitting Wherever back tucks and shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with the chain, with the chain shirt on you used to wear, nigga. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Niggas didn't even know. It was me and Isaac Hayes and Beyonce with that chain shirt. The chain oh. shirt on. <laughs> 
That's now, further though, when I got to the States, when I got back to the States, J.J. Williamson. Yeah, Well, JJ. I used to look up to J.J. We both from Mississippi, and I was just like, he could do that. I, I could do it. Yeah, J.J. Um, that dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Now, now, what's one of the, bo- the biggest misconceptions about comedy f- uh, to all of y'all? Mm. People think it's easy. People think they can do... Uh, yeah. you, you, you can be in the living room with your family and they feel like they can take it to the stage. And, they, and then they, they, they quickly realize that comedy is an art. It's an yeah. art that we, we really practice hard on, I mean, like day in and day out, to make it look easy. Yeah. So, because you know, people think, oh man, I, I'm, I'm a comedian too, but you on a, on a, on a street corner, just you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, roasting people and all that, and they think that they can be, become comedy, and, and then when they get on stage, they're totally lost because they yeah. now realizing that it's an art, and that we always own. Nigga, I'm a human being, man. I ain't, I ain't always trying to be funny. If I'm at the urinal, nigga, I'm not finna go back and forth with no jokes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm trying to piss, my nigga. What, 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 I'm what, holding what my dick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that that's one of the things. You holding your dick, he walk up to you, tell me a joke and show me a back tub. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think another mis- misconception about comedians is that all comedians is happy. These niggas is bitter. Bitter. It's a lot of angry, unhappy ass, miserable in yeah. life ass comedians out here. And they use comedy as a mask. Yes. Yes. They, I mean, yes. bitter. And when I say a lot, I would, I would, I don't know if y'all agree with this. It, I would say the majority. Uh, I would say 90%. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I, 90, I would say 90%. 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 Angry, you gotta understand, bitter, you gotta understand, you gotta understand, you gotta understand. Miserable people. Comics are coming from their own life. And, mm. and sometimes people's lives are miserable and they're not doing as well as they should or they think they should. So they're bitter and they're doing a lot of fucked up shit in the industry, and, and they, but they mask it with comedy. They can be some mm. of the funniest people out, but they're really bitter people. They're just bitter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and, of course, misery loves company, you know? Did you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Damn. comics These are some they, weirdos, they, man. They, yeah, comics are some weirdos. You. I would have hugged you, so they, ain't no yeah, big deal. I mean, you know, it's got to be something wrong with you to do this anyway. You want to get up and just expose yourself to strangers and your, your, you know, your vulnerability and stuff like that. Right, but, right, right. You know, people yeah. cope with shit differently. If you got fucked up shit in your life, you you turn it into jokes. You exactly. make fun of it, and then you do it on Com- stage. That's why they say comedy is pain. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, okay, now speak to what he just said. Just said, Like, every time people come up to you and say, hey, I, d- d- I thought what you did was great. I like, like, you know, you've heard this thousands of times. How do you receive it these days with these ca- pretend like these cameras are off? Uh-huh. Can you answer this question honestly? Yeah, I can. If somebody tell me I did a good job, I'd be like, God bless you, thank you, I appreciate it. That's just my thing, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. um, you got to understand something. These are your fans. These are people who look up to you, who admire you for what you do. Mm-hmm. So why not be nice to them? You know what I'm saying? I've never had somebody to come up to me and they're nice to me and I'm rude to them and they didn't bought a ticket to my mm-hmm. show. It doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. You, no. you, you're really killing your pockets because people still talk. They still have telephones. They have all that to call mm-hmm. and say, hey, man, I went to his show and he was a complete asshole. Uh, that's all people need to hear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They won't fuck with you. It is what it is. So. Yeah. I, um, yeah, people, I, my thing is, people don't have to, it's so much, especially like being a black comic, every day before you make it, make it, somebody tell you ain't shit when you're a black comic. Exactly. Black people, it's like they go out of their way to let you know <laughs> what you do ain't shit. <laughs> yes, they do. They go out of their way. Yeah. To do that. So when you have somebody say something positive, it's, uh, for me, I'm like, Steve, it's always well received. Because you constantly get niggas shitting on you. It's well, like, you- like blame, it's like niggas will, will you, you'll do a video online and it'll have 80,000 views. So clearly people fucking with it. But it'll still be somebody in the comments, nigga, what you funny. do this for? That shit wasn't funny. Like, I, I, nigga, I, I did that to then you. Then keep like, that was pushing. Funny. Why the fuck did you take the time out of your life? That was me. 
to comment and try to shit on me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's on the record. So yeah, so when somebody says I'm nice, it get, it's like a breath of fresh air because we the other side happening way more often. Yeah. Hey, so Jack, let me ask y'all a question. Have y'all ever told somebody you was a comedian they'd be like, tell me a joke? Now, I, I, that shit get on my nerves. Yeah. I'd be like, nigga, yeah. I'm not at work. Uh, you, nah, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Now, speak to what you, what you had said. Now, we are our own worst critics. So I've had people come up to me, man, you killed that. And I thought that was ass. But I, all, I still was grateful and smiled and thank you yeah. and stuff like that. Because I know I didn't say this word when I was supposed to say it. And I, I, my timing was off here and there, but the audience don't know that. Right. So, you know, say, sometimes you be down on yourself. <laughs> and then, But the audience think you did an amazing job. So, But he ain't have to do that to you. You know, walk away. Well, he, like, yeah, he's, he's a dickhead you know, for that. Yeah. Point yeah. blank period. He's a yeah. dickhead for that. No, what did you do? He ain't do that. He just said good <laughs> show. <laughs> did you say good show loud? Or did you say it soft? What it did you don't say? matter. You said good show. He's a dickhead. And you was in L.A. There's a lot of weirdos out there. See, I was, oh, he was in L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you was oh, in L.A. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, you. Yeah, oh, see, you, that's yeah. a whole nother. That's a whole nother. Yeah, 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 that's that's a whole nother movie. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's a whole nother. That's because that's a a grind that mm. people don't understand. Like, cause it, the, you know, a lot of people that live that move to LA, uh, LA and everything to chase the dream, they they ain't really on the road like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But they do. They, they a lot of them do really do have their shit together on stage and shit. And they're waiting for that person to come in and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or waiting that, for that yeah. agent to come in and say, uh, "Hey, we're gonna pick you for sweeps week and, or, or pilot mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. and da da da." And they beat themselves that that shit that, that shit'll eat you up and you know what I'm saying? Spit you mm -hmm. out and whatnot. Every day it's a group of motherfuckers going to L.A. with with with, with big dreams. Uh, hopes, big dreams. Hopes and aspirations. Yep. Yep. Hopes and aspirations, man. And they they leave, man, broken, super broken. More broken than they was before they, they even left. True. And true. So, you true. know, and, you know, and then one thing, uh uh when you are when you are a person that has a dream of being somebody, it ain't nothing like feeling in, in, in a place like LA. LA is a really <laughs> lonely place. And everybody that you meet there is always saying, yeah, just hit my people up. Hit my people yeah. up, and then you ain't even get their people number. <laughs> they ain't give you their people number. Yeah, yeah. And one thing about L.A. Uh, compared to other places, every nigga in L.A. feel like they can be that dude. Yeah. yeah. Every mm -hmm. nigga there feel like they can be that dude, and mm -hmm. regardless of what they are. Because in L.A., you don't, if, even if you're a com comedian, you don't necessarily have to be funny in L.A. Because it's L.A., so it's movies, TV shows, and all this stuff right here. So you can just have a look. Mm -hmm. And you can be slightly humorous in L.A. and still get put on. That's why even the most unfunniest dude who or whoever or chick or whatever in L.A. still can walk around with that type swag because they know I ain't got to be, yeah, I know I ain't the funniest dude going on this stage every week. Long but I got that look. I got, yeah. a, I got a decent look. I'm 6'2", I'm yeah. you know what I'm saying, I'm clean cut. I'm the type. I'm, I'm slim, I'm, yeah. I'm that type. So they yeah. still, so all of them still feel like they can make it. I'm 5'7". Yeah. Five, five, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of people said uh, back in the, like, 90s, when, they, when you, you, you even asked about other comedians moving to L.A., do you want to be... Uh, uh, a, sm a small fish in a big pond. Uh, you want to be a little fish, and well, let, let that lake come to you. Yeah. I used to hear that shit all the time yeah. in the '90s. Yeah. Well, you know, in all the time in the early 2000s. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, d d what is really the right answer? You know, as a young, up and coming, budding comedian. Like, I don't think you got to move there now. No, no, yeah, no, I don't now. either. You yeah, know, because now, now you have social media, so it's called yeah. creating a buzz. Yeah, yeah. Like, once, once you create that buzz, right. trust me, people will start migrating to you. To you. you know, mm -hmm. LA uh, agents, whoever, because you you have a buzz on yourself. Back in the day, you would have to go to these places and build your name up. You see what I'm saying? And you might make it, and you may fail. But now, with with social media and technology, now you can create that buzz, and people will come to you. And then, then not only that, you already be ready built because you already have your following, you already have your audience, all that. So you know, it's it's a lot <coughs> easier now <coughs> thanks to social media. Yeah. Well, I mean, but, but you guys, y'all all came from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't from Atlanta. Yeah. Right. Well, I am. 
Yeah, yeah, he is. You from, you from Atlanta? Yeah. I don't know why you don't decade away. Yeah. Great. I don't know why I keep yeah. there. You all, man, we done had this right. conversation many times. Exactly. I'm yeah. not from Atlanta. Yeah, east yeah. side till I die. He got you. You for sure live. He's a hater. I apologize, bro. He's a hater right here. Wow. Everybody want to be part of the original team. He from Jonesboro. He from Jonesboro. Everybody want to be part of the original team. What camera am I looking at? He from Jonesboro. All that. Yeah. So y'all wouldn't tell nobody to go go to New York or go to LA to you know broaden their horizons. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's I'm like them. I don't think it's necessary. But why why move to New York, put yourself in a financial bind and mm-hmm. all this stuff right here? Where well, you could stay in Mississippi or Atlanta or whatever, get the same buzz, get the same heat, and then somebody from New York, <laughs> a big agent will see you because you done created that buzz like Steve is talking about, and they'll pay for you to move to New York. And they'll pay yeah. for you to move to LA. You didn't say Alabama. Uh, yeah, because no, nobody wants to be from Alabama. Go ahead. I'm from... Yeah. I can dig it. Yeah, so that, that's... Yeah, I just don't think it's necessary. The internet has shrank the world. Yeah, it has. Mm-hmm. So the inter- social media makes... In good LA ways and bad ways. Be, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the inter- social media makes L.A. in your basement. Exactly. It makes New York in the, in the, the bathroom because you can reach them from all those places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We about to reach some people on Channel 85. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. That's what this is what we are. So we we finna talk about conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I didn't you know. Like, do, 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 do we have some conspiracy theories, motherfuckers, over here today? No. No. Like, are, are y'all? Would we, you, would you, would you, would you, actually, would you, we hate them. I believe in conspiracy theories. Is the niggas who push them that aggravate the shit out of me? <laughs> these the niggas, these aggressive niggas who fuck up cookouts and make hostile work environments. <laughs> don't eat that green <laughs> bean. This nigga want to talk no, about. No, don't this, eat that green bean. Want to talk th- about this stupid shit all the goddamn time, man. And then I be like, okay, what the fuck you want me to do about it? Now they sitting there looking stupid at you. Yeah. <laughs> see, he see he a sheep. No, nigga, I want you to tell me what the fuck you want me to do about what you just said. And they can't never ask you. Hey, hey, bro, I just had the same conversation yesterday with my homeboy. We all know him, too. And I, I tell y'all after the show who he is. Uh, <laughs> he he keep like, hey, man, didn't I fucking tell you that it's aliens here now? <laughs> <laughs> and it might be, but what the fuck you want me to do what, about What the fuck you want me to do? <laughs> hey, he did on, it. How he know that? Yeah. Yeah. He, he ain't never it. seen it. He don't know where they, what grocery store they didn't show it up at. How he know that? Hey, Jack, and he dead ass serious. He did. Eye and everything. The nigga started whispering. <laughs> like like the like the aliens like the was aliens listening, listening like they were listening. Man, no, now, out of all I the conversations you. to listen to on this planet, I told he you. thought the aliens was listening to yes. y'all conversations. Yes, fuck listening to some shit they at the spied. Pentagon. Fuck listening to some shit <laughs> in spied. New York at the World Trade. And fuck that. He thought the aliens yeah. want to listen to your conversation. So nigga walked up to you and whispered in your ear. You know it's aliens. The nigga <laughs> called me. Uh huh. <laughs> And when the, the, the digger brought Jamie Foxx into this shit and everything. <laughs> so they, oh, like, yeah. oh, they connect everything. They connect everything. everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, so, hey, so the man, aliens and got Jamie why, Tell me why all these young niggas is dying at 60 years old, like fucking Lance Riddick. You see, why the fuck Jam- Jamie Foxx then goddamn had a heart attack and a stroke on the set? Because he took the vaccine, nigga. A nigga got killed in a car wreck. Nigga says the vaccine. Nigga, yeah. Hold on, bro. <laughs> Vaccine ain't kill everybody, bro. Ain't <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, what, what you talking about? Yes. So, so is that's the everybody blame everything on the back. Everybody oh, yeah. blame everybody everybody dying early. Like niggas just started dying early. Like, yep, yes, like they just, just started, started dying. dying early. He's been dying at 22 and 30, 18 and 16 since the beginning of time. <laughs> nigga, now all of a sudden, 16 year olds is only dying. It's gone too soon. Niggas 16 been, is gone too soon. Niggas yeah. been dying like they ain't never died before. Yes. yes. <laughs> And then a lot of conspiracy theory, they them was the slow niggas in school. Yes. And now you a philosopher online, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nigga, it's like, Plato. Yeah, nigga, what <laughs> the fuck, nigga? <laughs> yes, man. It, 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 the shit just getting out of fucking hand. It, it, uh, it, it's um, it's the it's the it's the vaccine shit. Uh-huh. Uh, what's another motherfucking conspiracy theory that? Tupac. Tupac. And the, you know, the, what government, the, did? the government didn't kill niggas and shit. I, he's still well, alive on the island. Why is it that with a conspiracy nigga go talking about who in the Illuminati, he only say black 
superstars. Nigga, goddamn Carol Burnett ain't Illuminati, nigga. <laughs> Bill Clinton, you don't know no white folks in Illuminati? Only black folks in Illuminati? Nigga, uh, what's, what's the uh, oh, old white lady with the golden girl just died? Betty White. Betty White. Betty White. White. Betty White. White. She, she had, had to be. Her. She but, but, had to be. But, but, but Jay-Z in the Illuminati. She had Yossi to be in it. Fair Fawcett had to be. LeBron James in Illuminati. Fair Fawcett. Fair Fawcett had to be in the Illuminati. Ain't no white folks in Illuminati. I remember my ass Snoop Dogg and some shit like that back in 2013. I said, hey, man, so is the Illuminati real? He said, hey, man, can I keep it real with you real quick? I said, yes, please, if you don't mind. And he said, man, I don't even know what the fuck that shit is. Can I ask you a question? Talk to me. Is the Illuminati real, man? Can I tell you the real answer? I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> <laughs> and niggas always be saying I'm associated with it whenever I put a picture up. They be like, he is, but look at that. Look at the way he did this. Look at the stars and the diamonds. I'm like, what the fuck is? I never even paid no attention. <laughs> <laughs> and this fucking Snoop Dogg. It's a, it's a if secret anybody's for a supposed reason. to be in the Illuminati, it's got to be Snoop. It's, it's got to be Snoop Dogg. Reason. Come on, you know, ain't man. No, ain't no nigga named Tony who worked down at the Walmart plant. Nigga, you ain't got the info. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why they chose? That's my face. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he late. He got to go to the meeting. Yeah. 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 And I'm late. I got to go yeah, to the man. Illuminati meeting. So they gonna let you know. <laughs> and if it's this, don't folk live like this They think they gonna let you know. And if it's this many niggas in Illuminati. Do you really still think it would be a secret? Come on, man. Yeah, nigga be if with this many things that they say is in Illuminati, do you still think it would be a secret? Nigga, everybody would know all of the rules. Niggas would be the post. Niggas would, you know how we do, we gotta be seen. So niggas would be at the Illuminati entrance door like, nigga, I'm about to go into the Illuminati. Hey, man. Nigga. Hey, nigga. You about to go in this bitch. Shout out to everybody who want to be down with the Illuminati. We in this bitch. I we'll sell out in a fucking minute. Hey, in a minute. <laughs> Nigga, I, I thought I thought driving three niggas all over the country and turning backflips on stage was the was the way to get in. I thought that was real. Yeah, come on, man. It didn't that happen. Ain't it. it didn't happen. It didn't and then happen. ain't nobody saying that the Illuminati ain't real or ain't no conspiracy. We tripping on the niggas yeah. who be aggressively pushing the shit. Baby, you know them personally, man. You don't know what the fuck you talking about. You was hey. in the damn bungalows, the little special ed building <laughs> behind the high school. You said the bungalows, yeah. the bungalows, man. <laughs> hey, remember when we thought when nobody snitching? Remember that? I ain't when never we thought that. When nobody snitching and it was a very taboo thing. Man, when as you got older, not. you learned Hey, man, it. look, I'm going to be honest. I'm uh, Look, I'm at the age right now, I'm going to openly tell you, I'm going to snitch. <laughs> I'm telling on every goddamn body, yeah. Get, get in my car with some, with some stuff on you and I'm, don't tell I'm, me. I'm telling you. We, <laughs> we, don't, we at that age now, I'm, we got I'm a problem. telling you. Yeah, we yeah. Got a problem. First 48 has shown you that everybody's snitching on everybody. Niggas is snitching on they self. It's yeah. a TV show. Yeah. First 48. Yeah. Been running how many seasons now? Forever. Forever. No. And niggas is telling on they self. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was there, but I don't know who shot him. Nigga! <laughs> you and I we, already told. Well, you done told you was there, nigga. We know. We look at the videotape. We see it was only two niggas in there. And then you say I was there. The, the dead nigga, we got his body. So clearly you the other nigga in the video. Come Go, on, put, man. put the handcuffs on yourself. Come the on, handcuffs. man. Get, <laughs> yeah, niggas is snitching. Niggas been snitching. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Everything's, everything, everybody hard to niggas start... Calculating them years. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And them charges start dropping. And you start seeing, ooh, I ain't gonna never get out of here. And then you hit the equal sign and the E pop up on mm -hmm. them years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> niggas start telling. Error, nigga. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Niggas start telling. Man, everybody is telling. Don't get it. They 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 saying no snitching for the street cred shit. Don't don't fall yeah. for that. That's that is a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. That motherfuckers yeah. are telling. That's just what it is. Is niggas still asking niggas to take charges for them? That's some, that's some goofy shit to me. I don't I don't understand the concept of it. I don't I don't yeah, get I it. I, I, I imagine that happening to me. I imagine that I laugh so fucking hard at them <laughs> that my fucking spleen shot out my ass. Like, <laughs> you think I'm finna take a charge for you, bro? Like you, <laughs> nigga, you pull the call yeah. before the police, bro. I'm the one calling the dog. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here. Don't, don't bring it up. Fuck out, fuck out my face. Get him bro. over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, take a charge. Take I'm a not charge. taking nothing. Hell no. For somebody else? No. Come, on, come on, man. For it, somebody it, else? It's, no, it's getting out of no. hand, man. It's getting out of hand. Hey, so we, we've talked about conspiracy theories, man. Oh, let's go to, yeah, we talk like this podcast. How does this this idea even come together, Steve? You're the spearhead of this. Man, you know what, man? Um... 
me, me and Lab and I, we talked, man, uh, and we were just talking about just getting together, doing just just coming together, doing some crazy stuff, man. Talking about different topics. Uh, you know, of course, we brought Marv in, and as a guest, we was a guest first, right, Marv? Yes, I mean, and Marv was like, Marv worked out so well, man. So you like, you know what, man? Let's just keep this threesome going. Is all is everything is all good? Ooh. The 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 the, the um, <laughs> shut up, man. Y'all, <laughs> let's keep this. Let, let, let's keep us three together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Let's keep this group yeah. together. Let's keep this group together. This threesome. We doing. We doing our thing, man. Got to work on your adjectives. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, hey. 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 Hands right, on your hips. Then, <laughs> then your Jack comes. Hey, man. Jack comes in. Hey, man. It, it it turns into magic. And then here we are, man. Uh, the year we talk like this podcast. People are loving it, man. We're growing on people. And uh, you know, we 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 got a great support system, my man B Goldie, uh, and dot net digital band, just everybody's behind us, man, and it's growing. And and you know, we we're just proud of it. That's what's up, man. Hey, so when y'all when y'all all set out to be uh uh comics, man, what was the ultimate goal for you? Was this just to 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 get by? What's the what's the what what was the end goal? Well, for me, I know in the beginning, I, I wanted to be a working comic in in, in comedy clubs. Um, you know, just uh, you know, just I, the the appeal of being on the road in the weekend, I'm hitting comedy clubs. That's what I got in this for. You know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying, just I really did did romanticize it. It's it's a little bit different now because I did not anticipate social media staring stuff mm-hmm. all over. The, so you know, you got to regroup. But uh, that was my goal in the beginning. My goal was pretty much to, you know, get in to be very successful. Uh, I think I'm doing pretty well. And um, become a comedic actor. But continue doing my, my stand-up comedy and, of course, uh, produce shows and stuff like that. So, you know, that goal is pretty much intact. And, um, you know, we, we, we're seeing where it goes. Uh, my goal, I, I want to be able to do everything. Anything that falls up under the comedy umbrella, I want to be able to do that. Exactly. Be that stand-up mm. comedy, improv, comedic actor, writing. Uh, I just I, that was my goal to be able content to do content creator. Every content creator, everything that f- falls up under the comedic umbrella. That that was that was has always been my goal, and um, and I've had the opportunity to pretty much do almost all of them up under that umbrella. And that's, that's I just want to keep being able to do that and keep getting better at each one of those things. Now, when it comes to the business, man, what, what, what's something that y'all could just do without? Like, wh- what y'all don't like about it? What, what y'all don't like about comedy? You know what, man? We, I think, I mean, from my perspective, I love everything about comedy. Of course, the business is going to be the business. The business, when you go in knowing that it's business, then it do, it's not as bothersome. You know what I'm saying? And you, when you come in young and you think we're like a, all, we are a brotherhood, a fraternity, and you mm. get burned, then you know either you take that step to learn more about it and become business minded, or you become bitter. And you know, unfortunately, some have gone the other way. So once you learn it is a business and you treat it as such, then you'll be fine. But I mean, it, but it's nothing like being on stage and doing your thing, man. That's, 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 that's just, that's like amazing. But the business part can be trying, but we got to remember it is a business. Um, let me see. Now, if, if I had to pick something I don't like, like you asked, I don't like the fact that, uh, and this, I don't even know if this is just a straight comedy thing. I don't like the fact that we are in a in a, a period where real talent is marginalized. Yeah. Yeah. And if I could change anything, I would make talent be back at the forefront. I would. I want people who know how to sing to get the record deals. I want people who can rap to get the 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 uh, record deals. I want comedians who are funny, who actually do stand up, who do comedy to get the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Just talented people. I don't. I don't care what you do, but talent is has been marginalized across the board. Not so required. I, so, so if I could change anything, I, I would make talent be be the first thing that people look at again. That's great. That's what. That's what I would change if I was changing anything. I don't like about comedy. It's the same thing that I don't like about society. You don't have to prove yourself no more. There used to be structure when I first started. Like, for instance, if I'm around a headliner, man, I'm not talking. 
Don't go in the green room. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's certain things you do that's gone. That's completely gone. I know some folks say, well, that's Hayes. I don't give a damn what it was. It was a side of respect. And even today, if I'm around a DL or somebody like that, I do more listening than I do talking. Exactly. And so these days you got you got open micers who out here, you know what I'm saying, getting with 30 year comedians like they on equal footing and you ain't. Exactly. Out you talking ain't, you ain't out, out talking and everything. So that that aggravates me. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Trying to shoot him and shit. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Bro. Yeah, bro. Speaking of a whole nother story, <laughs> is there anything that happened inside your career, <laughs> you know, where you was just out one night and, <laughs> you know, just, just, you were just minding your own business <laughs> and, and some wild <laughs> shit popped up? <laughs> Steve go first. Hey, no, hey, yeah, Steve go first. first. <laughs> no, Steve go hey, first. Hey, man, I had a young comic to pull a gun on me, man, to pull a gun on and, me. And we was there. Yeah, we, yeah, we was there. Everybody we scattered there. and left me. And I'm, I'm looking at this dude. It, and, and come to find they out, man. They scattered and left you. Well, we couldn't well, stand right behind you because it was behind in a line of fire. It was, we don't yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no use in everybody getting shot. Hey, hey. And I'm a big nigga, hey, so you know I can't what, man? Somebody got to stand right behind you. You know what? Come to find testify. out. Hey, Somebody well, got to testify. Well, the young brother pulled a gun, man. Yeah. Uh, we had words. Um, and come to find out, he was a fan of mine. Mm -hmm. Still is. Still call me to this day, believe it or not. I, I won't answer. But, I mean, I think we've talked about that, Jack. He could call, and uh, I won't answer. But, you know, he, he wanted to get my attention uh, one, way or, one way or another. You know, and I, I've got emails where, man, I look up to you, this and this and this and that and this and that. But he wanted to get my attention, but he didn't know he didn't know how to go about doing it. I love you so much I kill you. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> uh, and uh, he was just just poking the bear, just poking the bear. And, you know, I've been doing— He was about to shoot the bear. <laughs> <laughs> look. <laughs> and laugh, mm -hmm. and I've been knowing laugh. <laughs> laugh, how long have we been knowing each other? 20 plus years. And laugh was like, don't say nothing back, Steve. And then Marv looked at me and <laughs> like, don't say nothing back. And I was like— I'm going to say something back. And the young nigga, and nah, I ain't go that far. I'm just like, look, man, leave me alone, bro. If you, if you want problems, I'm, I'm about to give them to you. Leave me alone. And the nigga said, y'all watch this. He walked off. We ain't think nothing, we ain't think nothing of it. Next thing you know, he came back with a gun. And I'm just standing there looking at him. He like, them long barrels on <laughs> <laughs> He walked off rather aggressively. Dirty so hair. And, and, and now we, we talking. No, and Bugs Bunny. Nigga. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elmer Fudd. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, <laughs> he had those desert <laughs> eagles. I could have I, I sworn that nigga said silly wabbit. Yeah. Look, uh, <laughs> but he came back with the gun. He was like, like he was started just talking crazy. And I just stood up and just looking at him. Like, what the, what the fuck are you doing? And then he's like, nobody better not move. And everybody like, fuck this, we ain't trying to get shot. Nigga. Nobody. He said, like, I, not I, just I, he was, he was like, what you doing? You finna rob, rob all us? of us? You finna rob yeah. us? Or you gonna shoot us? Man, now none of you niggas move. Like, we yeah. all sitting there like, yeah. yeah. And I'll show you how even in danger, niggas is hard head. Every nigga moved. Everybody moved. Not, everybody and, moved. And, and, and you can't blame them. You know what I'm saying? Nobody want to be in a line of fire. So I'm like, you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so he he eventually calmed down and walked left. And that was pretty much it, man. But uh, again, that's wild, Steve. Yeah, wild. Yeah, man, that, that's why. Can y'all top that? No, I can't. <laughs> I can't and you that. know what, man? This particular club, which is a well-respected club, because yeah. I, I don't get out like you know, I don't get out a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like a homebody. And these two, it talked me into going out for the yeah. first time. Come on out, man! Because it's a nice, welcoming environment. Mm -hmm. uh, which camera do what I look thought. in? Which camera do I look in? Now, these niggas set me up. They set me up. <laughs> no, no, you set yourself. Up. <laughs> you set yourself. Up. <laughs> it was. It's a conspiracy theory, I believe. You know. <laughs> Yeah, not at all. The, uh, uh, Marv, you you had anything like that happen to you? Uh, not to top that, but I I have uh, gotten into it with some hecklers, and I let my anger get the best of me, and I went too overboard, and they, some a couple of them rushed the stage, and they stopped them, then they went outside and called some people. And he was trying to make me stay in there, but my truck was in between them. I had my gun in my truck, so I went in my truck. I got my gun. They got in the car and followed me, got on 285. They, they peeled off after a couple of miles, but 
That was the craziest thing that happened. Well, um, Mom, that's Mom, unlike that, you. That was actually better. Well, that's well, but but that but, <laughs> that's, but that's why you. I don't talk Mom, to heckle. That that's why I don't deal with it now. I don't, I don't even do that. I don't even engage. I don't I, you know? I ain't talk never. Over, I, don't, I ain't never that. had no shit like that happen to me. Yeah, that, um, yeah, that was some Mississippi uh, burning shit. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was hearing that long. <laughs> so they were trying to rush the stage, Mom. Oh, but I but 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 I went I went overboard though. I mean, I call it. I call it lady about six different cunts, whores. I mean, I, she had got me mad. I, oh, just, I went, I went stupid with it. So it was my Who's fault that, lady? that it got that bad. But you know, <laughs> you bitch. learn. You learn. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> the they, they call family members. Oh, what people? Yeah, the we had a family reunion yeah. in the parking lot. But my yeah. truck Cook was out. close. <laughs> got that truck. Had my gun. It wasn't gonna be none of that. Oh so. man, this remind me of. Uh, another comedian that had a story was calling motherfuckers bitches at a at a at a mosque meeting one night. At a, oh, a mosque meeting. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell your name after after it's gonna make too much sense after we. After, <laughs> uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> when you hear when you hear this nigga name, you you like, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, Lab, you never had a story? You ain't never got not, into not a Not happened comedy. to me. Now, I've been with other cats who have created drama, and I was in their drama by default. And I think, they, as Marvin was talking, the craziest thing I can think of, uh, me and Sea Dog, and I can t- say his name because he, he tell his story all the time. We was in North Carolina, and we was on the creative tour. And uh, it was this hood-ass club in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And Sea uh, Dog was on stage, and so... This big dude walked in. He got about like 6'5", 330. If somebody said he played NFL ball, nobody would have questioned it. He was yeah. that big. So he walked in. He sat down at the bar, and Sea Dog started talking about him, joking on him. You know, not killing him, but kind of joking on him. Because, you know, dude, 6'5", 300-plus walk in. You got to say something. And it, was, it wasn't that packed. So, boom. So Sea Dog talking about it. He said he stood up. He said, man, man, go on with that bullshit. So then Sea Dog, you know, how comics is, he laid into him a little bit more. This nigga walked on this little stage area and got nose to nose with C Dog. Security in the club, nothing. Nobody moved, nobody did shit. He's like, all right, I ain't gonna tell you again. Let that shit go. So then finally a waitress came and said, hey, let it go. So she walked him back. So we end the show. And so the nigga goes into like the little back pool room. And so now C Dog mad because he's like, he go to security, y'all, you just let this nigga walk up on me? He's like, hey, man. That's the biggest drug dealer in the city. Every nigga who sell dope in the city work for that nigga. He say, uh, so he mad for real. So you might want to go and leave. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so nigga, we get up and we go to the car. And while we walk into the car, about four box Chevys pull up. You already know, Ooh. nigga, the box Chevys pull up. Yeah. Nigga, they got the arsenal in the goddamn back. Mm-hmm. So we didn't even go to the hotel, nigga. We we went back to the hotel. Actually, we packed all our shit up, and we drove back to Atlanta from Greenville, uh, North Carolina, which is about a six-and-a-half-hour drive at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Ooh. Because we was like, yeah, this ain't the place to be with goddamn Nino Brown looking for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, in, the box Chevy yeah. In, the, in the box Chevy squad. So that's the craziest <laughs> thing I think I ever been a part of. Woo! Like, that's Clearly. What's up. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Hey, man, but I, mean, I really appreciate y'all coming to the show, man. This is the appreciate first and definitely not going to be the last because, man, we joined together for life. For sure. Is that there anything is. y'all want to say to New Jack Thriller City, man, before we get out of here? Hey, man, thank y'all for having us, man. This is uh, another notch in our belt to success. We appreciate y'all, man. We appreciate this platform, 85 South, the, uh, the Channel 85. Hey, man, it's, it's a blessing. We appreciate it. We humbly appreciate it. Appreciate y'all. I definitely man. appreciate it. And I mean, all what Carlos Newman has created here, man, this is beautiful, man. Beautiful new new studio. But again, you know, said I'm comedian Marvin Hunter. Uh, get at me on uh, Instagram at, at uh, comedian Marvin H1. That's comedian Marvin H1. And also, I will be at the Atlanta Comedy Theater June the 8th, man. Make sure y'all spread the word, man, doing my thing. It is. All right. Uh, same thing. Uh, appreciate it, Jack. You know, Jack, you, I tell you this all the time. I mean, you know, we talk on, on a regular basis on the phone. Jack, one, you entertains the hell out of me. Mm, yeah. You, you yeah. entertain yeah. the hell out of me. Yeah. And, uh, us. I, I, yeah, well, yeah, you, us, but you damn sure 100% entertains the shit out of me. Uh, and I tell you that all the time. I enjoy talking to you, enjoy kicking it with you, and I appreciate you. Again, you got a platform you, you invited us on. I know comics who have platforms, and won't you know, and won't, and won't yeah. bring you on the platform. It you know what real. I'm saying? It is real. And 
you you do it. You know what I'm saying? You always show love. So I, it, it's like what he said. You know, you you hit, get shitted on so much when somebody fucking got their hand out and extend it. You it, you just want to reach back out and shake it. So I, I, we appreciate it. That's no it. doubt, no doubt, For no sure. doubt. Man, hey, y'all my best friends, man. Hey, uh, anytime I can be there for y'all, y'all always there for me. You know, that's what I'm going to do. It's my job, man. Well, just do the one one request. Stop calling me. Let me know you naked. I don't like all that shit. Just, just, just say. Hey, you you know what's funny about that? Hey, so, you call me at hey, three o'clock in the morning. I, what you doing, Steve? I'm like, what you doing, Jack? I'm naked. Jack, why the fuck are you calling me? I, I, I was on the phone FaceTime with Cisco yesterday. He said, nigga, is your shoulders out, man? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what kind of shirt you had on that was just your shoulders out? Nigga? My shirt was off. <laughs> yeah, my shirt was off. He, he he called me. He called me. He heard I had glaucoma and stuff. He was calling me to see if I was all right and whatnot. And um, yeah, I was just in an awkward position. That is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, and I, face I, I was trying to. And, uh, yeah, I, you, I can't see myself and him at on the phone. But at you the knew same you ain't have no shirt on. Yeah, but I, I was trying to angle it up so he, I, he couldn't see my shoulder. Don't I angle it. Just, just, <laughs> just don't answer. I leave the phone point straight to the ceiling. I know, yeah, though. right. That's you what I should have right. yeah, yeah, naked. Naked. He be naked. naked. You had no shirt What are you doing? Yeah, I was. I didn't want to be rude. And you don't think showing a nigga your areolas is rude? Not rude. He, he didn't see no nipples. It was just this part right here. It don't even matter, bro. Yeah, it don't even Especially matter. Especially if that bitch was shining. Yeah, it was shining. It was yeah. shining. You got I would look greasy out here. Nigga looking at your shoulder blade. You can't <laughs> see that. <laughs> hey, man, let's take some pictures, man. Hey, New Jack Thriller City, man. Yeah, we talk like this podcast, man. Marvin Hunter, Lav Love, Steve Brown, we out of here. Wiz, take us out. Let's if your mattress would have been 10 years old, older than 10 years old, oh, pick oh, it up and oh, put it out. Come to Gallery Furniture and get yourself a beautiful new Sealy Posture Fitting Mattress. Get the best sleep money can buy on a Sealy Posture Fitting Mattress. They're all on sale right now. You say you want a man with some money.